This is the ninth video in our series looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology Network Attached Storage Device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. In our previous video, we took a look at how you create a user account. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you create network shares for a Synology NAS. A network share is simply a storage point on the NAS that we can make accessible to individuals or multiple users of our home network. In our example, we will be creating five network shares. Finance, Homework, Manuals, Public and Software. Our aim is to give you a few suggestions for the types of shares that you can create for your own home network. The finance share is a network share that we will use to keep information about our household accounts. This could include a household ledger, our bank account details, correspondence and invoices. The homework share is a network share that we can use to keep a backup copy of a child's schoolwork or a business report that you have written for work. By being stored on our NAS, any document in the homework share will be backed up and if we desire, we can make accessible via the internet. Manuals is a centralized place where we can store a PDF copy of user guides, warranties and receipts for every device in our house. That way if we have a problem with a device, be it a lawnmower or our central heating system, we have useful documentation to hand that can be easily accessed. The public share is a general purpose folder that everyone who has an account on our network can use. We use the public folder to allow us to store data either for a short period of time or if we want to transfer data to another user of our home network. Finally, we'll create a software folder that will allow us to store a copy of the installation files for any software that we've purchased for the computers connected to our home network. This folder will store the software files along with any licensing information so that we can quickly and easily reinstall any software that might stop working. In our previous video, we ended that video having created a user account. So we now find ourselves still logged into the Disk Station Manager in Control Panel viewing the user settings. In order to create a new folder share, we need to select Shared Folders. At the moment, because we've not yet created any shares, only the Create button is active. When we select Create, we are presented with the Shared Folder Creation Wizard. Let's create a shared folder. First, we need to enter the name of our shared folder. It's best practice to keep the shared folder name as short as possible. However, we can use the description field to try and more fully describe what the shared folder will be used for. Location allows us to choose where this folder will be created. As we currently only have one hard drive installed on our NAS, we will have to choose Volume 1. The options Hide the shared folder in My Network Places and Hide subfolders and files from users without permissions are two settings that we will leave disabled for now. This is best practice while in the process of setting up our NAS, as we should look to minimize any adjustments to settings that deviate too much from the default. Only once we know that our network shares are accessible to each device on our network should we start to tweak settings and then those changes should be small changes so that we can easily roll back the changes if we find the network share stops working correctly. Enable Recycle Bin is a way to restore a deleted file or folder from our folder share. While no substitute for making a regular backup, it is a useful function to have enabled. For now, we're going to leave the recycle bin restricted to administrators only. Let's select Next. Encryption allows us to add an additional layer of protection to the shared folder. However, unless your NAS has dedicated hardware for dealing with the encryption and decryption of data, enabling this feature will adversely affect the performance of your NAS. It is for this reason that we've decided not to enable this function on our NAS. When we select Next, we're given a summary of the settings that we have chosen for the creation of this shared folder. The final section of the Shared Folder Creation Wizard 
allows us to set the group and user permissions for this share. At the moment, only the administrator accounts have read-write access over the folder. As we'll be looking at groups and user permissions in the next video in this series, we'll be leaving these settings on their defaults by selecting OK. With our public folder now created, we can repeat the exact same process to create the other shared folders for our NAS. Let's create the finance, homework, manuals and software shared folders. So to recap, we've made some suggestions for shared folders that you could create for your NAS. We then looked at the process for creating shared folders using the shared folder creation wizard. In the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at how you create groups and then use those groups to set access permissions to the shared folders that we have just created.